Oh, there's a sound. Okay. I gotta learn. I don't even know how to. There's this window stuff. Oh, you know what? This is. I can read this. Okay. I sure wish. Uh, that's gonna be fun. Stamp collections. This might be the most stupid thing I ever did. Starting a stamp collection. Stamp collection. Worthless. I bought this in uh, 19, 1979. In 1979 I bought this in Austria. I was a, a young man back then. And I still have it. I brought it with me to America. And I think everything in here, I probably paid like, I don't know, 50 bucks. And I saved it for 40 years. And now it's worth $35. Stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. Hey, there you are! Today we're gonna do the comments. It's Sunday. We're sitting around the house. And I'm gonna read your comments and I'm gonna try to answer them truthfully. Truthfully. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the one on the on the jam video. James with Gunter playing bass. That was kind of cool. Eddie Chi. I sure wish it were possible to jam with you sometime. That's possible. I mean, right now it's not, you know. I mean, we can't go anywhere. All the venues are closed. Bubbly. My favorite water. I do not get paid for. Yeah, everything's closed, so everybody jams. A couple of friends of mine, they do from the recording studio, they do a live Facebook, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> but I do nothing. I just play, play around the house and make videos and, and just play. I play uh, pretty much every day. Perhaps even get you to play on one of the songs on my next album. Oh. That's music in my ears, because that's what I get paid for. Uh, so you have my contact, and uh, if you like what I do and you think it would be cool, I would love to play in your album. Of course, I haven't heard anything, but I'm sure it's cool. Anytime, man, just contact me. Sean Fleming. The next comment. Finally, the rock got himself. That's a nice comment. I mean, boy, that's, you know, Eric Clapton was caught. They, they were holding up signs to Eric Clapton. Uh, Clapton is God, you know. So I'm not even close, trust me. So, and I don't feel like it. And I, but, but that's a very nice thing to say. Thank you. Stay safe and God bless. Matt Lucci. I love seeing you just jamming out. I really regret selling my guitar and amp years ago and because I'm out of work at the moment, I can't afford to buy a new one. And it would have been perfect at this time still have it and be able to take it up again. Yeah, this is a good time, you know, we're all sitting at home. It's a good time to play a little bit, pick up your instrument again and do things, you know. I'm really struggling to find things to do during this lockdown. You're on YouTube watching videos, it's kind of cool. I Actually, I find a lot, lot of things to do. I, I mean, I shoot videos, I make music, 
I list a lot of stuff on eBay because I, you know, there's so much stuff we have at the house that's not listed, and I even list, list cheaper items now. So just to, you know, just get rid of it. There's a lot of things to do. So <clears throat> you said you're a little bit too short to buy another bass or a guitar. Uh, you uh, you're a little bit short on money. So I don't know what you're doing, but there's lots of online possibilities where you can make money, you know. you I don't know if you have an eBay account, if not, do that. List the stuff in your garage you don't need. Or, you know, there's graphic design, all kinds of things you can do on the internet. So, I, I don't see that, you know, it is, there's always something to do. So, when I hear the words, hey, there you are, I know, we are in for a good time. That's great. That's nice. Thank you. I I try to have a good time and, you know, we all should have a good time no matter what. I mean, it's not always possible, but, uh, you know, it's my, my grandpa used to say, if something happens to you, no matter if you cry or if you laugh, it'll stay the same. And that's true. You know, it's your reaction to the, to the action, what, what you do with it. So I try to laugh as much as I can. Uh, oh, by the way, there's a YouTube video of I'm Here Now. That's a movie I was in with, a Neil Breen movie. Uh, that has your picture from the film, as it's the thumbnail. I think it's great. Yeah, Neil Breen movie was fun to do. It was great. I love, I don't know what that means, love it, greetings from the Netherlands, well, I was in the Netherlands many years ago, many times, I was in Rotterdam, I was in Amsterdam, uh, I played music there, I was on vacation there, I, I love, I love Holland and the people there. I always had a good time there. Great, great country. The Krachten, you know, in, 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 in Amsterdam, they have a house. In the front you have your driveway and your car sitting. And in the back you have the, the channel, water, you know, a canal, channel, Krachten, they call it. And there's the boat. So you go in the front, take the car. You go in the back, take the boat. Awesome. Love your jamming section, Rock Out Counter. Thank you very much. I love to jam. That was great. Love it. Okay. Love it, Booba. We should jam sometime. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, you know, message me or whatever. Whatever, you know. We have the same time at the same city. I'll jam. I don't care. Uh, he got uh, in German. Greetings from Germany. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody comes from Rene's channel, from my son's channel, Bargain Hunters. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Tim Doyle says, The man! Yeah. Storage because play that funky music, white boy. William Bemek, Rock on Ganta. Okay, that was the jam video. Pretty cool. Thanks for all the comments and thanks for subscribing. And I do one more. I'm going to go over to the giveaway, to the Silver Dollar giveaway movie, uh, YouTube. And we check the comments there because that was the one where I was also asking for questions. And I think we have a few questions there. Hey, there you are. I think it would be interesting for you to interject stories from your youth in Europe, from your professional career, stories about bands and situations you encountered along the way to where you are now. Well, that's, that's a big story. <laughs> I did 
I make it real short. You know, it's I started out in Austria playing music. I was very lucky when I was young. When I was sixteen, I started playing bass. I started in a in a home, you know, in 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 my hometown, uh, which actually my mom was a teacher, and there was like in this little town where she was, it was like the population was only four hundred, and the next town is like two thousand or three thousand, and we started a band, and uh, I played keyboard because that's how I started to learn piano. And uh, in that band we had no bass player. And there was no bass player. But there was another keyboard player who was much, much better than I was. So the band member said, okay, he's playing keyboard, you play the bass. And the guitar player's brother gave me a real cheap bass with an action like that high. So I started picking up the bass and I liked it. And that's how I got started to play bass. I got really lucky in Austria. After not too long, a couple of years, I was like in a, in a real good band that was playing like four, four days a week or so. And then everything became smaller and I I wanted to progress. I was in my twenties. Got married already and I moved to Germany. And in Germany I started working in a music store selling instruments and meeting lots of musicians. And one customer was a, a band that was from Croatia. Yugoslavia back then. And they had a number one hit in Croatia and they were playing a lot in Germany and their bass player passed away very tragically. The guitar player was a friend of mine and he every when they were in town he always came to the music store. We always were talking and we were jamming in the store. And for some reason he he liked me and and he came to the store one day and said, listen, Fuma, that was the name of the bass player, they called him Fuma because he smoked so much, passed away. We need to play tomorrow night. Can you do it? So they were like kind of a rock and roll band back then, you know, 70s with the, with the leather jackets, mostly three chords, you know, one, four, five for the musicians. Easy to pick up. So I said, yeah, let's do it. So they had that stage clothes. They had in Croatian stuff, they were on TV, all kinds of stuff, so they were known. They had that stage clothes and uh, I had to make a, a, a leather jacket <coughs> real fast and we played and I played that gig with them. And next day, they asked me, you want to be in the band? So I did that and I played, I was touring with them for quite a while. We were playing nice gigs with them. I, back then it was disco, you know. We got paid fairly well and, and nice gigs. So that was that. And I did that for a few years and I always wanted to come to America. And I had three businesses besides the music and sold everything. And that's, it's going to be too long, you know, if I... But I made a decision. I, I packed up my whole family, uh, sold the business, sold everything. And had, the plan was to come over here. We had friends in Vegas. That's why I came to Vegas. They had the house rented. Everything was done for me. And the plan was to stay one year and then go back. So we came over. And then the story really begins. And maybe I do that another time because so many things happened in America in my career that one day really took off thanks to Mike Varney, thanks to Shrapnel Records. He obviously seen a talent in me and, and hired me for a record. First record I did on Shrapnel was Pat Travers. And from then on, 
Mike called me again for another record, and another record, and I started working. And things started growing, and I got got paid better and better and better. So that was great. And the, the, the next big major impact probably was my son René, Bargain Hunters. Uh, when he called me one time and, and said, hey, Storage Wars, you told us to bring somebody to the show. Whoever we want to, just bring somebody for one episode, a guest. And he, he said, you want to go? I said, yeah, I go. So he told him, I bring my dad. So I showed up there. He checked a little bit my history, researched on me. That was interesting to them. However, I did one episode. And I don't know, obviously, they liked it or the audience liked it. Or, you know, they have focus groups. So people must have said something. They like it. And it kept growing. They called me back and called me back and called me back. And I did seven or eight episodes. And now we didn't do nothing for a long time, but I don't know what, what's happening. But I did all that. So that was a was a major thing in my career too, uh, being on A&D TV. But, uh, and the rest, you all know, I'm on YouTube now. This is the biggest ever. So, uh, so I hope that answers the question. It was long, that was a long time, so, sorry. Mike H. Should we end the Fed? Gold and silver is money. Thanks for your uploads. Well, I'm not going to comment on that. I don't do anything politically, religious, or any of that. I don't know. Uh, gold and silver is money, I agree. Uh, I mean, gold is money for thousands of years. Gold standard. Uh, you know, Roosevelt in 1933, for instance, if you, if you know history a little bit, uh, and Nixon, the, you know... Uh, are the reason why they took off money from the gold standard, you know, so, uh, yeah, gold is money, I agree, I, I love gold, although I don't have any, but I still love it, but I have a few silver coins, not a lot, all in the bank, safe, and uh, they're just I, protection, you know, whatever, when, whenever I need them, if I will ever need them. William Wemmick, here there you are. Was René a good kid? What did he cause a lot of mischief? Thank you for the videos too. All my children were good kids. I'm, I feel very blessed to have my children. and It was an enrichment in my life. I had a great time with them when they were little. I had a great time and we were a little bit bigger and we were tra uh, bigger and we were traveling. And now that they are big, it's mostly joy. I mean, nothing's perfect, but it's mostly joy. And I already got nine grandchildren. So, and I don't see them too often. The ones in Vegas I see more than Tatiana in uh, San Diego. But every time I see them, it's just, it's just a blast. So that's really cool. I mean, families it really is number one. And as of René, yeah, he was a really good kid. He, he, he was a good kid. Hey, there you are. Hey, there you are. Hey, there you are. How long have you been growing your hair? James Reddits. Have you ever been to Wiesbaden? I've been to Wiesbaden, I don't know how many times. I played in the in the Westfalenhalle. I think with that one band. So I've, I've been there a lot. There's also rhein main Halle, somewhere there, Westfalenhalle, one of those. So yeah, I've been in Wies Wiesbaden a lot. Thank you so much. Hey, there you are. How long have you lived in the USA? I really like seeing you and your son on storage. Well, stay care, stay safe. Well, thank you very much. We, we try to stay safe. Okay. And uh, uh, game changer. How long have you lived in the USA? 
in the USA uh, 30 years. Yeah. I came in 1990, so I'm here exactly 30 years. Matt Ludi. Gandan is my favorite star of the Breen films. Love you, man. Love you too, Matt. And I'm only in one Breen film, but uh, that's nice. That's nice that you say so. I only had a very small role there. Hey there, you are nice silver. Hey there, you are. Have you seen the World Cup final 1974 between Holland and Germany? And did the best team win? You know, if there's one thing I don't care too much about, it's sports. I did watch soccer once in a while, but I don't remember Holland and Germany. I don't remember who won. And I might have watched it. 1974, I was 18 years old. That's the year I got my driver's license. I remember that. And that was pretty much the most important thing to me that year. So once I had the driver's license, it was January 24. When I got my driver's license issue, we have to make tests and stuff, they're big tests. <clears throat> so I am pretty sure while that game was going on, uh, I was driving the car because that's all I wanted to do. Hey there you are, hey there you are. What's the biggest score you got so far? Boy, I don't even remember. I made so many deals. I bought one time from the bank a company that is called Melos. It is an audiophile. It is an audiophile company, makes huge tube amplifiers, $10,000 amplifiers. And I bought the whole factory. Uh, they were delinquent and they actually they were fly by night they took off to New York and the Russian owner. And uh, the bank, actually a friend told me about it, Steve Williams, one, one of my very, very good friends told me about uh, that this stuff is sitting there and the bank is stuck with it. And they owed $90,000 to the bank and I ended up after lots of negotiations to pay $4,800 for the whole deal. They left, fly by night. We opened the test, there were lipsticks from the secretary. There was everything just left. But there was lots of, they were kind of fraudulent. They, they would take amplifiers in, take a payment to, to repair. Let's say it's $2,500, they would charge your credit card and never send you your amp back. So, long story, but I made, I made tens of thousands of dollars on the deal over the years. So that was a pretty, pretty big deal. There's other ones, but that one I remember, it was kind of cool. Was so much stuff I hardly could fit it, you know. So how are you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, there you are, Gunter. I've written a few music magazines over the past few decades. I'm a big UFO fan and got to know Pete by Tell him I said hello if you know him. Uh, yes, how did you end? Uh, how did you end up getting to play on Michael Schenker's Pattison project? Chuck M is asking that question. How did I get to 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 Michael Schenker's Pattison Summit? Album to play on. Uh, I I did lots of albums for Shrapnel, Mike Varney. And uh, Mike Varney just called me and said, we're doing a Schenker Pattison album and uh, you want to play bass? It was real simple. And of course I said yes. And then that's when I met Michael the first time. And we made photos, photo shoots together and that kind of stuff. So, real simple. He just called me to play. Uh, so, that's it for the comments on this video so far. We might, we might do another one, but I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. I mean, I love to do this video uh, at the moment because nothing else to do, right? and you know why. So, I think it's great that we have that foundation for communication that is so 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 cool that we still can be a little bit together and you know if you want to make comments and so please put in the let me know put your links in there you're welcome i don't see that as spam or anything 
put your links to your videos, put your links to your channel, and I'm gonna go over there, I watch, I promise, because I'm interested in people who watch my stuff, and other musicians, and other people who, who buy storage auctions, or whatever you do, eBay resellers, I'm interested in all of that. So, don't hesitate, put a link down there, and I promise you, I, I'm gonna come over, I subscribe, and and I check it out, and I comment, and I let you know what, whatever I think. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being you, thank you for being here, thank you for watching this video, and I promise there's more to come. Thank you all.